a two worlds there are in which we live one the external the other internal the external the search began in the external and man at first wanted to get answers for all the deep problems from outside nature sublime ideas came from the external world indeed in the karma kanda portion of the vedas we find the most wonderful ideas of religion inculcated we find the most wonderful ideas about an overruling creator preserver and destroyer of the universe presented before us in language sometimes the most soul stirring three we find it is only a painting of the sublime outside we find that yet it is gross that something of matter yet clings to it the internal therefore in the second portion of janana kanda we find there is altogether a different procedure from the external the search came to the internal from matter to mind there arose the cry when a man dies what becomes of him some say that he exists others that he is gone say o king of death what is the truth an entirely different procedure we find here bold brave beyond the conception of the present day stand the giant minds of the sages of the upanishads declaring the noblest truths that have ever been preached to humanity without any compromise without any fear this my countrymen i want to lay before you truly has it been said of the upanishads by ramanuj that they form the head the shoulders the crest of the vedas and surely enough the upanishads have become the bible of modern india the hindus have the greatest respect for the karma kanda of the vedas but for all practical purposes we know that for ages by shruti has been meant the upanishads and the upanishads alone these are the truths that alone can be universal and in spite of all the changes that have come to india as to our social surroundings our methods of dress our manner of eating our modes of worship these universal truths of the shrutis the marvelous vedantic ideas stand out in their own sublimity immovable unvanquishable deathless and immortal mistaken notion in modern india that the word vedanta has reference only to the advait system remember that in modern india the three prasthanas are considered equally important in the study of all the systems of religion one the upanishads the vyasa sutras and the gita therefore have been taken up by every sect in india that wants to claim authority for orthodoxy whether dualist or vishishtadvaitist or advaitist the authorities of each of these are the three prasthanas to we find that a shankaracharya or a ramanuj or a mandhvacharya or a vallabhacharya or a chaitanya any one who wanted to propound a new sect had to take up these three systems and write only a new commentary on them therefore it would be wrong to confine the word vedanta only to one system which has arisen out of the upanishads all these are covered by the word vedanta the vishishtadvaitist has as much right to be called a vedantist as the advaitist in fact i will go a little further and say that what we really mean by the word hindu is really the same as vedantist swami ji's conclusion is that these systems do not contradict each other see the theme of the upanishads what is that knowing which we know everything else in modern language the theme of the upanishads is to find an ultimate unity of things knowledge is nothing but finding unity in the midst of diversity every science is based upon this all human knowledge is based upon the finding of unity in the midst of diversity and if it is the task of small fragments of human knowledge which we call our sciences to find unity in the midst of a few different phenomena the task becomes stupendous when the theme before us is to find unity in the midst of this marvelously diversified universe where prevail unnumbered differences in name and form in matter and spirit each thought differing from every other thought each form differing from every other form yet to harmonize these many planes and unending lokas in the midst of this infinite variety to find unity is the theme of the upanishads on the other hand 
the old idea of arundhati nyaya applies to show a man the fine star arundhati one takes the big and brilliant nearest to it upon which he is asked to fix his eyes first and then it becomes quite easy to direct his sight to arundhati this is the task before us and to prove my idea i have simply to show you the upanishads and you will see it nearly every chapter begins with dualistic teaching upasana god is first taught as someone who is the creator of this universe its preserver and unto whom everything goes at last he is one to be worshiped the ruler the guide of nature external and internal yet appearing as if he were outside of nature and external one step further and we find the same teacher teaching that this god is not outside of nature but immanent in nature and at last both ideas are discarded and whatever is real is he there is no difference shwet ke tu that thou art that immanent one is at last declared to be the same that is in the human soul here is no compromise here is no fear of others opinions truth bold truth has been taught in bold language and we need not fear to preach the truth in the same bold language today and by the grace of god i hope at least to be one who dares to be that bold preacher merits of the advaitic system one we will see also how in spite of people's curious notions about advaitism people's fright about advaitism it is the salvation of the world because therein alone is to be found the reason of things to dualism and other isms are very good as means of worship very satisfying to the mind and maybe they have helped the mind onward but if man wants to be rational and religious at the same time advait is the one system in the world for him some principles of advait one as such it follows that every soul is infinite from the lowest worm that crawls under our feet to the noblest and greatest saints all have this infinite power infinite purity and infinite everything only the difference is in the degree of manifestation the worm is only manifesting just a little bit of that energy you have manifested more another godman has manifested still more that is all the difference but that infinite power is there all the same to so every one of us every being has as his own background such a reservoir of strength infinite power infinite purity infinite bliss and existence infinite only these locks these bodies are hindering us from expressing what we really are to the fullest dot and as these bodies become more and more finely organized as the tamoguna becomes the rajoguna and as the rajoguna becomes satvaguna more and more of this power and purity becomes manifest and therefore it is that our people have been so careful about eating and drinking and the food question 3 that is all the difference but all have the one idea that our atman has all the powers already not that anything will come to it from outside not that anything will drop into it from the skies mark you your vedas are not inspired but expired not that they came from anywhere outside but they are the eternal laws living in every soul for this is the one great idea to understand that our power is already ours our salvation is already within us say either that it has become contracted or say that it has been covered with the veil of maya it matters little the idea is there already you must have to believe in that believe in the possibility of everybody that even in the lowest man there is the same possibility as in the buddha this is the doctrine of the atman five people who have done a little better karma and get a better state of mind when they die look upon it as swarga and see indras and so forth people still higher will see it the very same thing as brahmaloka and the perfect ones will neither see the earth nor the heavens nor any loka at all the universe will have vanished and brahman will be in its stead six concept of moksha or liberation this infinite atman is as it were 
trying to see his own face, and all, from the lowest animals to the highest of gods, are like so many mirrors to reflect himself in, and he is taking up still others, finding them insufficient, until in the human body he comes to know that it is the finite of the finite, all is finite, there cannot be any expression of the infinite in the finite. Then comes the retrograde march, and this is what is called renunciation, Vairagya. Back from the senses, back. Do not go to the senses is the watchword of Vairagya. This is the watchword of all morality, this is the watchword of all well-being, for you must remember that with us the universe begins in tapasya, in renunciation, and as you go back and back, all the forms are being manifested before you, and they are left aside one after the other until you remain what you really are. This is moksha or liberation. 7. The witness alone enjoys, and none else. Oh, they say, you Hindus have become quiescent, and good for nothing, through this doctrine that you are witnesses. First of all, it is only the witness that can enjoy. If there is a wrestling match, who enjoys it, those who take part in it, or those who are looking on, the outsiders? The more and more you are the witness of anything in life, the more you enjoy it. And this is Ananda, and therefore, infinite bliss can only be yours when you have become the witness of this universe, then alone you are a Mukta Purusha. It is the witness alone that can work without any desire, without any idea of going to heaven, without any idea of blame, without any idea of praise. Some major points of Advat system. Every one of these points in the Advat system requires years to understand and months to explain one this theory of Maya has been the most difficult thing to understand in all ages let me tell you in a few words that it is surely no theory, it is the combination of the three ideas Deshakalanimitta, space, time and causation and this time and space and cause have been further reduced into Namarupa to in fact it is this Maya that causes the Atman to be caught, as it were, in so many millions of beings, and these are distinguishable only through name and form. If you leave it alone, let name and form go, all this variety vanishes forever, and you are what you really are. This is Maya. Three there are three steps, therefore, in our knowledge of things, the first is that each thing is individual and separate from every other, and the next step is to find that there is a relation and correlation between all things, and the third is that there is only one thing which we see as many. The first idea of God with the ignorant is that this God is somewhere outside the universe, that is to say, the conception of God is extremely human, He does just what a man does only on a bigger and higher scale. And we have seen how that idea of God is proved in a few words to be unreasonable and insufficient second idea is that all this is bliss, O Gargi, wherever there is bliss there is a portion of the divine, you may use it how you like. In this light before me, you may give a poor man a hundred rupees, and another man may forge your name, but the light will be the same for both. This is the second stage, and the third is that God is neither outside nature nor inside nature, but God and nature and soul and universe are all convertible terms. You never see two things, it is your metaphysical words that have deluded you. You assume that you are a body and have a soul, and that you are both together. How can that be? Try in your own mind. If there is a yogi among you, he knows himself as Chaitanya, for him the body has vanished. An ordinary man thinks of himself as a body, the idea of spirit has vanished from him, but because the metaphysical ideas exist that man has a body and a soul and all these things, you think they are all simultaneously there. One thing at a time. Do not talk of God when you see matter, you see the effect, and the effect alone, and the cause you cannot see, and the moment you can see the cause, 
the effect will have vanished. Where is the world then, and who has taken it off? One that is present always as consciousness, the bliss absolute, beyond all bounds, beyond all compare, beyond all qualities, ever free, limitless as the sky, without parts, the absolute, the perfect, such a Brahman, O sage, O learned one, shines in the heart of the jnani in Samadhi. Viveka Shudmani, 408 How Advait can alone be scientific religion? What is the difference between science and common knowledge? Go out into the streets in the dark, and if something unusual is happening there, ask one of the passers-by what is the cause of it. If is ten to one that he will tell you, it is a ghost causing the phenomenon. He is always going after ghosts and spirits outside, because it is the nature of ignorance to seek for causes outside of effects. If a stone falls, it has been thrown by a devil or a ghost, says the ignorant man, but the scientific man says it is the law of nature, the law of gravitation. As step by step science is progressing, it has taken the explanation of natural phenomena out of the hands of spirits and angels. Because Advaitism has done likewise in spiritual matters, it is the most scientific religion. This universe has not been created by any extracosmic god, nor is it the work of any outside genies. It is self-creating, self-dissolving, self-manifesting, one infinite existence, the Brahman. Tattvamsi Shvetketo, that thou art. O Shvetketo, thus you see that this, and this alone, and none else, can be the only scientific religion. I expect that, whole sects of you will come over and dare to be Advaitists, and dare to preach it to the world in the words of Buddha, for the good of many, for the happiness of many. If you do not, I take you for cowards. If you cannot get over your cowardice, if your fear is your excuse, allow the same liberty to others, do not try to break up the poor idol worshipper, do not call him a devil, do not go about preaching to every man that does not agree entirely with you. Know first that you are cowards yourselves, and if society frightens you, if your own superstitions of the past frighten you so much, how much more will these superstitions frighten and bind down those who are ignorant? That is the Advat position. Have mercy on others. Would to God that the whole world were Advaitists tomorrow, not only in theory, but in realization. But if that cannot be, let us do the next best thing. Let us take the ignorant by the band, lead them always step by step just as they can go and know that every step in all religious growth in India has been progressive. It is not from bad to good, but from good to better. Boys blithely talk is that Advat makes people immoral, they learn from somebody, the Lord knows from whom, that Advat makes people immoral, because if we are all one and all God, what need of morality will there be at all? In the first place, that is the argument of the brute, who can only be kept down by the whip. If you are such brutes, commit suicide rather than pass for human beings who have to be kept down by the whip. If the whip is taken away, you will all be demons. You ought all to be killed if such is the case. There is no help for you, you must always be living under this whip and rod, and there is no salvation no escape for you. What is the reason that I should be moral? You cannot explain it except when you come to know the truth as given in the Gita, he who sees everyone in himself, and himself in everyone, thus seeing the same God living in all, he, the sage, no more kills the self by the self. Know through Advat that whomsoever you hurt, you hurt yourself, they are all you. Whether you know it or not, through all hands you work, through all feet you move, you are the king enjoying in the palace, you are the beggar leading that miserable existence in the street herein is morality. Here, in Advat alone, is morality explained. The others teach item but cannot give you its reason. Then, 
So far about explanation. Result of practice of Advesha. It is strength. Take off that veil of hypnotism which you have cast upon the world, send not out thoughts and words of weakness unto humanity. Know that all sins and all evils can be summed up in that one word, weakness. It is weakness that is the motive power in all evil doing, it is weakness that is the source of all selfishness, it is weakness that makes men injure others, it is weakness that makes them manifest what they are not in reality. Let them all know what they are, let them repeat day and night what they are. So hum, let them suck it in with their mother's milk, this idea of strength, I am he, I am he. This is to be heard first, etc. And then let them think of it, and out of that thought, out of that heart will proceed works such as the world has never seen. What has to be done? A. This Advait is said by some to be impracticable, that is to say, it is not yet manifesting itself on the material plane. To a certain extent that is true, for remember the saying of the Vedas. Om, this is the Brahman, Om, this is the greatest reality, he who knows the secret of this Om, whatever he desires that he gets. A. Therefore first know the secret of this Om, that you are the Om, know the secret of this Tattvamsi, and then and then alone whatever you want shall come to you. If you want to be great materially, believe that you are so. I may be a little bubble, and you may be a wave mountain high, but know that for both of us the infinite ocean is the background, the infinite Brahman is our magazine of power and strength, and we can draw as much as we like, both of us, I the bubble and you the mountain highway. Believe, therefore, in yourselves. The secret of Advat is, believe in yourselves first, and then believe in anything else. In the history of the world, you will find that only those nations that have believed in themselves have become great and strong. In the history of each nation, you will always find that only those individuals who have believed in themselves have become great and strong. This is teaching on the practical side. Believe, therefore, in yourselves, and if you want material wealth, work it out, it will come to you. If you want to be intellectual, work it out on the intellectual plane, and intellectual giants you shall be. And if you want to attain to freedom, work it out on the spiritual plane, and free you shall be and shall enter into nirvana, the eternal bliss. Therefore do not fear whether you are a woman or a shudra, for this religion is so great, says Lord Krishna, that even a little of it brings a great amount of good. Therefore, children of the Aryans, do not sit idle, awake, arise, and stop not till the goal is reached. The time has come when this Advait is to be worked out practically. Let us bring it down from heaven unto the earth, this is the present dispensation. A. The voices of our forefathers of old are telling us to bring it down from heaven to the earth want of practicality of Advait in India and solution to overcome it. A. In this country of ours, the very birthplace of the Vedanta, our masses have been hypnotized for ages into that state. To touch them is pollution, to sit with them is pollution. Hopeless they were born. Hopeless they must remain. And the result is that they have been sinking, 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 and have come to the last stage to which a human being can come. For what country is there in the world where man has to sleep with the cattle? And for this, blame nobody else, do not commit the mistake of the ignorant. The effect is here, and the cause is here too. We are to blame. Stand up. Be bold, and take the blame on your own shoulders. Do not go about throwing mud at others, for all the faults you suffer from, you are the sole and only cause. Young men of Lahore, understand this. Therefore, this great sin hereditary and national is on our shoulders. There is no hope for us. 
You may make thousands of societies, 20,000 political assemblages, 50,000 institutions. These will be of no use until there is that sympathy, that love, that heart that thinks for all, until Buddha's heart comes once more into India, until the words of the Lord Krishna are brought to their practical use, there is no hope for us. Therefore, young men of Lahore, raise once more that mighty banner of Advait, for on no other ground can you have that wonderful love until you see that the same Lord is present everywhere. Unfurl that banner of love. Arise, awake, and stop not till the goal is reached. Arise, arise once more, for nothing can be done without renunciation. If you want to help others, your little self must go. In the words of the Christians, you cannot serve God and mammon at the same time. Have Veragya. Your ancestors gave up the world for doing great things. At the present time there are men who give up the world to help their own salvation. Throw away everything, even your own salvation, and go and help others. A. You are always talking bold words, but here is practical Vedanta before you. Give up this little life of yours. What matters it if you die of starvation, you and I and thousands like us, so long as this nation lives? There are two curses here, first our weakness, secondly, our hatred, our dried up hearts. You may talk doctrines by the millions, you may have sects by the hundreds of millions, a, eh? but it is nothing until you have the heart to feel. Feel for them as your Veda teaches you, till you find they are parts of your own bodies, till you realize that you and they, the poor and the rich, the saint and the sinner, are all parts of one infinite whole, which you call Brahman. Gentlemen, I have tried to place before you a few of the most brilliant points of the Advait system, and now the time has come when it should be carried into practice, not only in this country but everywhere. Modern science and its sledgehammer blows are pulverizing the porcelain foundations of all dualistic religions everywhere. Not only here are the dualists torturing texts till they will extend no longer, for texts are not India rubber, it is not only here that they are trying to get into the nooks and corners to protect themselves, it is still more so in Europe and America. And even there something of this idea will have to go from India. It has already got there. It will have to grow and increase and save their civilizations too. For in the West the old order of things is vanishing, giving way to a new order of things, which is the worship of gold, the worship of mammon. Thus this old crude system of religion was better than the modern system, namely competition and gold. No nation, however strong, can stand on such foundations. And the history of the world tells us that all that had such foundations are dead and gone. In the first place we have to stop the incoming of such a wave in India. But above all, let me once more remind you that here is need of practical work. And the first part of that is that you should go to the sinking millions of India and take them by the hand, remembering the words of the Lord Krishna. Even in this life they have conquered relative existence, whose minds are firm fixed on the sameness of everything, for God is pure and the same to all, therefore, such are said to be living in God. 